So let's talk about a uh, broad picture about petroglyphs. Uh, they're all over the American Southwest. Uh, I don't know if there are uh, other indigenous tribes throughout North America, uh, but here is where the petroglyphs are known, right? I mean, yes. the, and, and what do we know about them? What we know mostly is the time period that they were made. That's the thing that's easiest to show, although there's a lot of variation because when you're trying to say carbon data, petroglyph is very hard because you're carbon dating a rock and you're trying to make differences between desert varnish, how old that is. So there's some guesswork, but with archeologists kind of digging around and figuring out what the sites were used for, like the site we're at here was camping and hunting most likely a couple times a year and maybe ceremonial but we don't know what they mean because the people who made them lived two, 3,000 years ago. You know, sometimes you, can, you know what it is. It's pretty clear what it is. It's a, an accurate depiction of the animal life or humans at the time, uh, like the cave art in, in Spain and Altamira and, and things like that. But a lot of this, this stuff is subject to interpretation. Oh, very much. When we were looking at those bighorn sheep, it's just, no question, those are big horned sheep, a female adult and a juvenile behind her. But then you see something that looks like a phantom with a sort of twisting devil tail and horns and arms. That is not any wildlife we currently have. Um, Paranagate man, the significance of that. I mean, the significance is this is the only place where it exists on Earth. Is it that much different from uh, a petroglyph art that exists elsewhere in Southwest? It is seen to be pretty different than other sort of abstract or possibly ceremonial figures that you see, say, in the Canyonlands of Utah or the rock art around Ridgecrest in the Mojave in California. And Paranagat Man is one specific kind of character, and it is not found anywhere else except in Lincoln County in a couple of sites. There's such a time gap in between the indigenous people back then and the indigenous, the tribes that still exist now, that there, there's, e even they guess, make guesses about what it meant, right? So if we've got something that we think looks like an alien, maybe it was an alien, maybe it was, it shows a UFO, like some of the images that we've seen, or maybe not. Uh, we, we see in it what we want to see, I guess, sometimes. But what we do know is that the epicenter of the modern alien mythology is right here in Lincoln County with Area 51. So maybe it's chance, but I like to think there's been something going on here for a long, long time. And just like we're fascinated by it and we try to take pictures of it, the people who were here long ago did the same thing. It is a heck of a coincidence at a minimum. It's a coincidence. There's only one Area 51, and there's only one place on Earth where you can see Paranagat Man. And they're both the same place. They're right here in Lincoln County. You have uh, sought out, found, photographed, written about rock art, petroglyphs all over the Southwest. Right? I have. And, uh, you know, the, the last thing I wanted to talk, talk about was uh, the lack of respect for them by so many people who go out and steal them or deface them as that one has been done. It's just yeah. hard to believe that you're to the, we're to the point where you can't really tell people where to, it is and how to find it because you gotta worry about them stealing it. It's true and we have to, to appreciate it, we have to know about it and we have to know why it's rare and why it matters. And if we look at the latest rock art in Lincoln County, it shows the European settlers, cowboy hats, guns, horses, wagons, all of this. So the rock art itself was evolving right up to the point of contact, really, right up to the point of settlement. And at that point, it becomes history. And then we have, what, 170 years since then. So in that time, we've had to decide, does it matter? Should we protect it? Should we care about it? And sometimes the natural instinct of people when we're at our worst is, ah, why don't we just screw it up? You know, why don't we just take it down maybe chip it away and put it in a museum or sell it to a collector. Or just deface it. Or just deface it.